Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I want to do some experimenting today. I want to know if iron on transfers will work in resin. So you saw the two butterflies that I'm going to use. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I've got my Nick Pro resin just sitting off and it was kind of degassing and doing its thing. Now I am going to kind of split it up into my big cup and these two little cups. And I am going to use this really pretty lilac color and just like this really gorgeous gorgeous creamy pink color and clear and I just kind of want to let it do its thing I'm I, I don't necessarily have any particular one design that I want to go with as far as like the effects that I want to get I just kind of wanted to do its thing want the colors to just dance on their own and see what we get and then use these gorgeous iron-on transfers hopefully maybe fingers crossed on this now i realized that i could you know glue them on or resin them on you know with like maybe uv resin and putting it down or something like that that's not what i want to do i want to see if we could actually apply them the way that they're intended onto resin so that's the experiment that we're going to do today and to see if it'll work. All right, got my colors all mixed up. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to just dump all my clear, and it's not a whole lot, into my mold. And then I'm going to take my heat gun and heat it up, knock out any bubbles that are still in there from me mixing it, and then we're going to kind of apply our colors and just see what'll happen. Now, when I decided on using this mold, I did not realize that it, I don't know if it wasn't laying flat or what the issue is, but it's got like this permanent pimple in it. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. And it's just like this deformity right where I was just messing with that it won't go down. And at this point, it was already too late. I already... You know, I've got my resin already in here, so I thought, really, I could, like, if I, once I put more resin in it, that it would just kind of set down. Well, I didn't have that kind of look. Anyway, so, I spread out my clear, I heated it up, thinned it out, popped the bubbles, now it's time to apply the color. Yeah, you can see it's really bothering me. All right, so I'm just going in and I am just kind of going for it and drizzling this pink all over the place. I'm going to go in with my purple and do the same exact thing. Again, I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know if, you know, just I don't know what design I'm going to get. I'm hoping it would be really cool, actually, if something like this would just stay, but, you know, I'm not going to sit long enough to wait for the resin to thicken up so that I have a better chance. That's just not me. I'm too impatient for that. But it like it really doesn't matter. I just kind of I just want something pretty. And I think that the pink and the purple are very very springy. They fit with the butterflies beautifully if they work and it's fine. All right. Got my colors in. I will heat it up just a little bit just to pop the bubbles that are in these two that were in the two cups with the colors from me mixing and whatever. And then we're just going to let this cure and hopefully that indentation in my mold will go away. It's not looking very promising. Okay, so we're just going to let this cure, do its thing, and I'm going to keep messing with this pimple and see if I can get it to go away. So... Now, here we are, and it is 24 hours later, and, I mean, it's alright, the pimple didn't go away, which is annoying. Um, anyway, now it's time to kind of figure out what I want to do with these butterflies, and I've decided that this one right here is going to cover the pimple from hell. And I'm just going to kind of trim it up just a little bit and so I can kind of get it placed the way I want it. 
And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take my heat gun and a craft stick and I'm going to heat up this iron on transfer. And as I'm heating it up, I am just rubbing over it continuously with this popsicle stick to get it to kind of sit in position for one and for that glue that's on the back of it to melt and get stuck on there really well. But since we don't have an iron, which is, you know, what this is supposed to have, this is the best way that I know anyway to try and do it to make it work. So I am going over it, you know, and I am pushing pretty hard to get it to stick on there. I just wanted to check and see. Now, I did let it cool for probably a good 30 minutes to make sure that that glue set. And now I'm going to see if this will come off. Now, one of the little leaves, because it had like separate pieces on it, I didn't, I guess, push on that to get it to stick. But that part doesn't really matter. And this part right here, I do have a slight issue with it where I guess I didn't rub it enough right there. But for the most part, this entire thing stuck on here surprisingly well. And it's gorgeous. Like, I love it. So I feel like this is something that, yeah, I'm trying to get this, that one little piece to kind of stick back on there. Um, I feel like this opens up for a whole nother line of possibilities on what you can and can't use in resin and you know we go to the temporary tattoos or stickers or cricket designs and stuff like that now we can use iron on transfers too now i would assume just like a sticker or a tattoo where it differs from a tattoo is it doesn't have that sticky surface on it like it does when you apply a tattoo to it i would assume that we would still need to put a coat over it because I would guess it would come off eventually depending on what it is but I'm not sure that's something to experiment with anyway back to the video I did mix up some more of my Nick Pro and I added just a touch of my pearl white which is my super sparkle just for a little bit of sparkle in this now you notice that I only used one I kind of I wanted to do this tray in layers and make it kind of pop out and stand out a little bit more so the next one that I'm going to use will be on this second layer after it cures. I am just going over spreading my resin out because I'm not trying to do super crazy thick you know layers here. I do need to get at least one more on here to cover up the next iron on. So I've got it all out. Now I want to do some stuff around the border. I, I want to dress this up a little bit. So I'm going to just heat it with my heat gun to pop any bubbles. And then I'm going to go in here and I want to put a border on it. So I decided that I'm going to use some of my opal stones and my amethyst stones and these really pretty, I guess they're like rose quartz stones that I have. And I'm just going to kind of Right now, I'm just kind of throwing them in there towards the edge, but if they go in the middle, it's fine. I'll just move them after I kind of get them all in there, and then I'll just kind of shove them over to where I want them. But I am going in with a combination of just all kinds of different stuff just to give it more interest so it's not just strictly the butterflies. Now, these stones are quite a bit bigger than my the other two that I have so I have to be careful because I need to make sure that it's not going to be so high that when I get to my last layer I'm not going to be able to cover it with resin like I don't want anything sticking out I want it flat all right so then I have these little pink balls and these kind of like opalesque looking balls now I know that I'm going to lose them mostly in the resin but I feel like they'll give it a kind of a nice distortion just to add a little bit more interest to it. And then I'm just taking my little silicone spatula and kind of pushing everything more towards the edge of this piece so that it's where I want it to be. And then I'm going to go in and add anything that I feel that maybe the area is missing. So I, I threw a few in the middle and then I was like, nah. 
not really digging it. It's just not what, like, it's not going to do enough of anything, any one particular thing for me to waste more in the center there. So I decided against it, adding any more. And I'm just going to kind of go back in with the purple and just put it in some spots where I feel like it needs just a tad more just to kind of flow with the rest of where the rest of them kind of landed. And then I decided that I'm, I'm not done yet. I want to bring some color to this piece as well, not just the same colors that I'm using. So I have these cute little, they're, I guess, acrylic flowers. I think they look like daisies or something like that. I don't know. I'm not much of a flower person as far as knowing them. So I decided that I'm going to go along the edge with those as well and just kind of alternate the colors and bring a little bit more color into this piece and just a little bit more interest on the edge. So I'm just going to kind of place these wherever I feel like I want to place them and go with it. Now this part does take me quite a while to do just to kind of make sure I'm trying to keep the colors as even as possible kind of going in the same order with the colors all the way around and trying to space them out as evenly as possible. I'm trying. It's it's gonna change a little bit where they meet up because I don't have enough and I didn't feel like re-spacing it out. Like I just don't have enough to go all the way around a second time with the, the same colors. So I mean it, it really doesn't matter. Like I just kinda like things to flow in the same order, if that makes sense. But all in all, like it doesn't matter. It's not gonna make that huge of a difference. It's just to add interest to these pieces. Now, one of the other reasons why I'm trying to keep stuff as close to the edge as possible is that I still need to add in this other butterfly once this layer has cured. And I don't want any kind of bumpiness. Like, I'm not going to put it right in the center. I'm going to, my plan is to put it kind of down towards the bottom edge again. So I don't want the bumpiness to be there because that may affect how this transfer goes on or if it will go on at all. Okay, so this is 24 hours later. Now that second layer has cured up beautifully. Now it's time to decide where I want to place this butterfly and in what position. And I just kind of, I'm trimming off around the edges so that I can put it as close to the edge as possible, you know, aside from where all my rocks and all that stuff are. So I am feeling around to make sure that wherever I place it, I'm not going to have any of those bumps from any of the stuff that's in the, that layer of resin underneath of this because it's not like completely covered. It just setting on there because it was a thin layer. So I kind of decide I want to angle this one going in this direction and just feeling around. It feels fine. So now we're going to do the same thing with the heat gun and the popsicle stick that we did on the other one. So now... When I'm doing this, now I have this sped up for you guys, but I probably spend between a good five to ten minutes doing this. Heating it up and where I am directing the heat at, that is where I'm rubbing because I want, as that glue is kind of melting on the other side, I want that to adhere to the resin. If I'm heating it in one spot and rubbing in another spot, it's not going to work, right? Like, I mean, maybe, but it's not going to go on as well as it would doing it this way. Now I'm just kind of checking it to see if it's, if I have to go longer. And I do have to go a little bit longer around some of these edges where these smaller pieces are. And now as this cools, I decided that I'm going to add some more to this layer and the horse rhinestones, the horse eye rhinestones that I used in uh, the tissue paper video, I am going to be placing those in here and I'm kind of going for the really pretty blues and purples and there's I think a yellow one that I use in there kind of along the same color scheme but they're a little bit brighter 
and more vivid colors than what I used on that bottom like layer of stuff around the edges. And I do realize that once I pour the resin in, I'm going to lose like the facets of this and that's okay. It's kind of more for the shape and the color and just the overall interest in this. Now, just like it did with the flowers, this part does take me a hot minute to do because one, these, this particular shape is very fiddly with tweezers or anything trying to pick it up. Like it just does not want to get picked up. And I've got to flip them all over, find the colors that I'm looking for because the colors that I got were like multicolored and I've got to pick out the particular colors that are going to go well with this. I don't want them too light because I don't want to lose it against the backing. So it's got to be a little bit darker than what my background is. And after I kind of figure out how many I have and have them like rough placed on here, I'm not going to just pour my resin over, then I'm going to get out my diamond glaze and I'm going to glue each one of these on individually so I don't have to worry about them floating or moving in the resin once I pour it and then let that dry and then we can pour our resin because by that point the butterfly should be cool enough and adhere onto the resin that we can lift off that the paper stuff that it comes on I don't know what it's called and then go from there but it's gonna take a hot minute so I did cut quite a bit of it out so that you didn't have to sit through all of it like it took me <laughs> a long time to do this okay so I, I've I'm done with that part now. I've got them all figured out. I've got them all kind of rough placed where I want them. Now it's time for the diamond glaze. And all I'm going to do is just take a tiny bit. You only need a very little bit of this stuff to work. And get my silicone tool. And now fight with them to lift them up. Put it down. And then place these babies on here. Again, it's a lengthy process. But I think in the end, it's definitely worth it. It does add, if you look at the the beginning piece where just the first butterfly was on before I did anything with the border, it looks a lot better now than it did just plain. And I'm, I'm really, I'm liking it. I like all of the different, you know, colors and effects and just the, the, I, I don't, I just, I really like it. I do. All right, so we're just about done with this, and now it's time to see if our transfer is ready, and it is. So we're going to very carefully pull this up. Now, there's just one little spot up at the top that doesn't stick down. So since I have the diamond glaze out, I decided that I'm just going to kind of glue that piece down so I don't have to cut it off or worry about it floating in the resin. I'm going to let this dry because I still have to wait for the diamond glaze to dry on all of these horseshoe eyes. Let it dry for about 30 minutes or so, and then we're going to come back and resin. All right, now everything's all nice and dry. Time to pour my Nick Pro resin onto it, and I did mix up quite a bit for this because I, I'm just going to fill the mold. Like, I don't want to do anything else to it. I think that there's enough going on, and I worry that if I do anything else, it's going to be too busy and just not look good. I poured a little bit in because I'm not sure exactly how much it's going to take. This is a huge mold and there's still quite a bit of room left. But I had to mix it up in two different cups because I don't have a cup big enough to do it all in one. And I'm just kind of going to smooth this out, push this up over top of my edges just to kind of make sure that they are completely, completely covered. And then I'll go ahead and I'll start adding the rest of the resin that I have. And it, it's just basically because I have a lot of texture and a lot of detail going over here. So that this way, if any bubbles kind of start clinging on, they'll have that chance to rise before I hit it with my heat gun the next go. And I will go around it with my silicone tool here after a bit just to make sure that there's nothing kind of stuck on there. 
but I do have a few of these rocks towards the bottom that are kind of high. I didn't pay close enough attention to like how high they were when I was putting them in. So I am kind of worried that it's not going to cover it, but hopefully it will. All right. So I poured a little bit more in now. I want to make sure I don't overflow this thing. I do want to take it completely to the top, but I don't want it to overflow either. So I'm just going in after I poured about half of what I had, hit it with the heat gun just to make sure that there's no bubbles in here. And then I decide that I want to add some more of these little balls. So I'm going to do that. And it's basically just to kind of bring them up a little bit higher because like I said, I did lose a lot of them in there. But this is going to help with that distortion and just that overall look. So I do add a little bit of each color on this piece right now just to bring up that texture and give it more depth and more dimension, if that makes sense. And that's really all I'm doing. And I, I feel like these ones may stand out just a tad bit better than the other ones because there's not going to be quite so much like going on with them. So they're not in the bottom where all the rocks and everything else is. The only thing that's on this layer is those horse eyes, the rhinestones and them. And that's it. So I, I think it'll, I think it'll work out a little bit better. Just moving them kind of all in place, making sure that everything's covered. And then I'm going to kind of pay attention to these rocks right here on the bottom. And you'll see here in a second, I'm going to drizzle right here. This is where I, I just can't tell if the resin's covering it. Like it looks like it must have been all the way up to the very, very like top of this mold because it was really, really hard to tell if I had it covered or not. Even going down, like getting eye level with the mold here, like I do in a little bit, it's really hard to tell. So I'm just drizzling it over the edge and then I'm just going to dump the rest in here in a minute and see but first I want to hit this with my heat gun and the reason I'm kind of doing this in layers is because I know I mix my resin too fast so I know that I incorporate a lot of bubbles in there needlessly but if I do it in kind of layers like I pour a little bit in and then I heat it up and blow out those bubbles and then pour more in I feel like I don't have as many bubbles because if I had poured it all in at one time, then that's a whole lot of resin that that heat gun has to move and get through to go to the bubbles that are on the bottom layer, if that makes sense, like towards the bottom of whatever layer I'm pouring. So that's kind of why I'm, I'm doing it when I do deeper pours like this is to just break up where those bubbles are so that I can get them all out and I don't have to worry about a million and one micro bubbles in my pieces. All right, getting rid of the last little bit of resin and we're going to let this guy cure, hit it with the heat gun one last time and I can't wait to demold it and see what it really, really looks like and see how bad that stupid pimple is on the other side that I'm going to now have to fix, but we're going to let it cure and see what it is. All right, now this baby is finally done. Time to demold it. Oh, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous, but look at that. Look how beautiful. Do you see all the effects of the little balls and the flowers and the horse eyes and just the rocks and all of it? Like it adds so much interest to this piece. I think it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. And anytime now, I'm just admiring its beauty. And there's the stupid pimple that I have to fix. So I guess the only thing I can think of is I'm just going to end up getting a little bit of resin and I may just do a backing on it and like do a flood, not a flood coat, but just kind of glue everything all up and do a top coat on it on the bottom and make it flat and even. I decided that I wanted to just kind of finish this piece off just on the edge, just a small line of silver with my paint pen. And I think it just adds to it. It finishes off that edge. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. 
And that being said, that is a wrap on this one, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will catch you guys on Tuesday for the next one. Love you. Bye.